Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, as you can see, I have a sketch done digitally and printed out onto this piece of paper, and I am going to be taking my time to transfer it to uh, five different pieces of paper, I believe, as I am going to be doing six iterations of this drawing. As the title suggests, we're going to be basically using one drawing and doing six different versions, and I'm mostly focusing on six different variations of mediums. So before we can do that, I do need to transfer the sketch to the appropriate kind of paper for each of the mediums. So five of the mediums will be in color, one will be in black and white, and then five of them will be done traditionally, and the last one will be done digitally. So in terms of transferring my sketch, you can see that I have printed out my sketch onto printer paper. I have a light pad underneath that and I have the papers on top just taped to it so that we can transfer uh, each of the lines to my paper. So the papers that I've chosen for today is mostly just plain cardstock and then I think I have one which is the Ohuhu marker paper so we can use alcohol markers more appropriately and then the last one is watercolor paper which is hot press paper. I'm going to be talking a little bit about my experience for each of the mediums and I'm going to say it right out from the gate is that I did not put my full effort in the watercolor and gouache painting and I apologize for that. I was just feeling very, um, I don't know, not into the painting portion for whatever reason and I'll explain it more into the individual little sections that I have planned for them. But yeah, um, transferring was a little bit tedious because I did have to do this, I think I did it actually six times but I only needed to do it five times, but I tried my best to make sure that I match the medium and the paper to the particular coloring method. So you can see this one, I started off with the Pilot Color Eno, but I noticed that for watercolors, I tend to use just pencil. Also, my hair is getting everywhere. Um, apologies that my hair is kind of in the way a little bit. But um, the rest of them mostly are using the Pilot Color Eno as I'm not dealing with water, but anything that dealt with water, I made sure to line with pencil or the Prismacolor Cold Erase so they don't dissolve upon contact with moisture. So once the sketch is done, I turn off the light pad and we can prepare for the actual portion of drawing or rendering or coloring the piece. So to start off kind of simple, I wanted to start with pencil. So this is our black and white version of the six, I guess. So pencil is like how I describe as, as my favorite medium to work with um, because there's a lot of versatility in terms of maybe producing texture or if you go really slow, you can make things look really smooth. You can do a lot of gradations, high contrast, or you can make things just look very textured with like cross hatching and very minimalistic or whatever you would like to do. So I'm going to be doing my usual way of how I actually render with pencil. So because of the sketch, is already transferred in pencil. I'm mostly just gonna be playing around and pushing values for the most part. Now, in terms of like the order of how I did each of the drawings, you guys are gonna be seeing it in order um, from each medium to medium. And to make sure that I wasn't too biased towards my color choices and picking, Every time I swapped mediums, I put away the previous attempts um, because I didn't wanna to be too influenced by the previous attempt. And now obviously it's not going to be fully clear of that because I'm going to have remember like past knowledge and like previous experience of working with the medium and potentially biased towards certain colors that I've used for let's say markers and then I take that in consideration when I'm working watercolor. But I tried my best to do the digital version last because the digital version gives me the most creativity and accessibility to like infinite colors and everything like that. I could play around with layers and whatever I want to, but kind of the start off easy, I wanted to do with pencil and then we're gonna move on to alcohol markers and so forth. But yeah, I think pencil is pretty straightforward. Um, not too much to say about it as I basically just push a lot of my darks as hard as I can with the pencil. I am working with a mechanical pencil. It's my favorite to work with usually. I know a lot of people like using maybe just like 
a barrel of lead or, or graphite, I guess, um, or kind of like the wooden pencils so that you can have um, different softnesses or hardnesses as well as a broader, thicker tip if need be. But yeah, for the most part, um, pretty easy. I think I did this in about an hour and 12 minutes. I'll try my best to remember around the times for each of the mediums, but the next two are definitely, I think, the most time consuming after this one. This one's the quickest because pencil I find very easy to work with. So yeah, digital sketch and here's the graphite version and how I would probably render if I was just using the graphite. Tried my best to provide a little bit of volume and the contrast with the pencil as much as I could. Okay, so moving on, we are working with alcohol markers. So before we actually start with the markers, I am going to be prepping the sketch a little bit. So because I think this was done with the Pilot Color Eno, maybe it was done with the Prismacolor Color Race, but I'm pretty sure it's done with the Pilot Color Eno. I wanted to lighten the sketch so it's not as jarring, um, but it also doesn't really dissolve too, too much with the alcohol markers. So I still have a good base on where I want to place each individual colors and everything like that. But um, time wise, I believe this one and the next one were the most time consuming. I think this one was close to probably four hours and it might be because like I'm not very proficient with using markers and me finding the markers tends to be a little bit tedious. So yeah, this one's definitely on the longer side in terms of working on with this particular medium. And because I'm not so proficient, I did spend a lot of time trying to layer up colors to see what would match Kali's color. Because for the most part, when I did individual sessions for each piece, I tried my best to look at only the reference and not matching the colors to each other, right? So apologies if some of the colors do look off because at some point I stopped, look at the like, stopped looking at the reference because in my brain I would think like after like you know three iterations I would know the colors for each individual thing so sorry if like for the next few some of the colors might be a little bit off um, but I thought it'd be fun to just do a comparison between all the different mediums and just how I personally work with each individual medium and how I render or bring it up to a certain finish I mentioned earlier that the gouache and the watercolor one was not up to, I guess like my standard of what I would consider a piece that I like, if that makes sense. And like I said, I'm going to mention the struggles that I had with each individual one a little bit later um, so that it kind of matches up a little bit easier with the footage and stuff. But for this one, I actually really enjoyed working with the alcohol markers. It might be because like I was using the marker pad paper from Ohuhu and I find that the colors blended really easily with one another and I did make sure to put the little plastic mat underneath so I taped the paper to the mat and taped the mat to my desk so that it wouldn't move but I didn't want any bleed through to be that jarring because I know this paper isn't like super super thick so I wanted to make sure that the bleed through was kept to a minimum anyways so it doesn't bleed onto my desk. Okay, so also, even while I'm working with alcohol markers, I'm not restricting myself to stick with the one medium per se. I'm treating it the same way how I would actually work with the medium if I was just kind of like making that my main medium, if that makes sense. So for line work, I am using the Magic Fly Dual Tip water-based markers and they have a fine liner side and it's much easier for me to match the colors to be a little bit softer for certain areas like I use the brown closer to the tips of Kali's hair, a darker redder brown for like her face and like any of those features, purple for her eyes, green for the hair, brown and black for Amber's hair and goggles and everything and it just makes things look a little bit softer and me looking back at like some of the footage, I do wish, like, I did wish that I kind of pushed the contrast a little bit more because I feel like after I put the line work, Kale became a little bit like faded looking. I think Amber is kind of better, but I feel like I could have brung out a little bit more of that kind of ready, ready, redder tone in their faces so that it looks a little bit more of a deeper color rather than very flat. But here on the left, we have the graphite version. On the right, we have the alcohol marker version. And now we are moving on to colored pencils, or how I like to say it, pencil crowns, because I am Canadian. So yeah, for the paper, 
we are working with the cardstock and then for the sketch i used the pilot color eno and the colored pink because i didn't want it to stand out too much but i do need to have kind of like a little guideline of where i'm placing each thing now in terms of time wise i think this one took about five ish hours if not four hours so similar ish in terms of the alcohol markers and I do have a lot of control with the colored pencils. I'm using mostly the Artex ones today. I didn't want to pull out my Prisma colors because they're kind of stowed away for a little bit. But the colors were quite vibrant. I think out of all of the different drawings, other than probably the digital and the graphite, this one's probably my favorite. And it might be because I have a lot of control in terms of the color variation and stuff. So I did kind of do a combination of very light layering at the very beginning. But once we move closer and closer to working on amber, I start to really press hard with the colored pencils because... I don't know if it's because the gaps of white and the pigment were getting a little jarring for me. The paper is fairly smooth, so like any part that had too much white space just kind of made things look a little bit too incomplete for me. So I kind of go back and start to darken things quite a bit. But for me, color pencils give me such control so that I can kind of play around with adding a lot of different colors and stuff if I really need to. And because um, sometimes I can't get the contrast to be super high. I tend to layer a lot of colors to achieve a certain look. But um, let me think. I don't think I explained what spurred this idea for me to draw six iterations of the same drawing. So I'm going to put a screenshot of a picture of Kale and then half a picture of Kale and Amber together. So I wanted to do this video for last year, but I didn't um, because it was going to be super time consuming. And I think I didn't really like the drawing that I did for Kale. So I think in the previous sketchbook, you guys would have saw that I had two drawings of Kale in my sketchbook. So one was done in graphite completely and one was kind of like sketched out in the Pilot Color Eno. And I was going to do the traditional versions in my sketchbook instead because I thought it'd be cool to have kind of like the comparison all in one place. But I realized quickly that watercolor and actually it's just mostly watercolor wouldn't been done justice in that kind of particular paper. So I wanted to make sure I use watercolor paper. And if I was already gonna do that, I might as well match the marker paper as well so that things can match up quite nicely and more appropriately per medium, if that makes sense. So I think you guys can tell that this method was definitely more time consuming because I'm constantly switching colors back and forth um, and trying to make sure that, you know, I can kind of color match a little bit and make sure that things read a little bit more clearly. And for me, I actually really do enjoy coloring with pencil crayons because of the versatility. And it's a very similar method to how I shade with pencils in general. So it's not too far from that, but it's definitely a lot of time just layering up and building color if you're not going ahead and just pressing super hard and doing like a solid fill. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to do the comparison like this because not only was it difference in time for each medium, I do think the color payoff is a little bit different for each one. Obviously people are going to work with each medium a little bit differently, but it's kind of like an interesting comparison. And another reason why I wanted to do this was actually because a couple of years ago, there was actually this picture of June wearing like a fish hat. So I'm talking about like 17's June. And during a fan signing, I think, he had like worn a plaid shirt or sweater and he had this giant fish little mask uh, face hat thing. If, I don't know, it like surrounds like the whole face and it's very like horizontally wide. And I remember I have a digital version of it. I'll put it on the screen, but I did this one actually last compared to the other, I think three or four drawings that I did of this drawing. So I did chibi versions of June where I did like a graphite version. I've done a watercolor version, I'm pretty sure. And the first one that I did, I think was a gouache version version was because I never used gouache before and I wanted to do like a small test painting and that's actually what I used for that but for some reason I did like three iterations of it and then I thought it'd be cool to do a digital version to see what it looked like and 
Surprisingly enough, I didn't really like the digital one that much, but that's the one I'm going to be showing you guys because I don't want to dig through countless amount of sketchbooks just to look for the small doodles, but that's kind of like what planted the seed in my brain a little bit to want to do this kind of comparison because I do get comments quite a bit. I don't think it will reflect very well in these pieces but usually if i work with gouache i do get some comments people saying that it looks very similar to my digital art um, sometimes i get that for watercolor as well and for um, the markers so i wanted to actually see a side-by-side -side comparison of each because i do think there's like a lot of differences but maybe if you don't see like the side by side it's hard to see so yeah, it's kind of like a little fun experiment and kind of lo me losing brain cells because drawing the same drawing over and over again, I got very, very tired and a little bit too indifferent um, as we moved down the the line of different mediums. But yeah, marker, one side, pencil crayon on the other, and we have the graphite underneath. So next up is watercolor. So let's talk about this first. The sketch was done mostly in pencil because that's how I usually like to work and nothing will budge after placing water but I will be doing the line work with watercolor anyway so we can cover up the graphite but the reason why I struggled with this so um, in previous watercolor videos I actually talked about how I've been really liking hot pressed paper a lot recently and I've been kind of painting on it more often compared to my cold pressed papers so i've been having a little bit more practice with it getting used to the drying time and how i want things to look and it dries very differently compared to cold pressed paper but my problem was is that i kind of forgot that a lot of my hot press paper is in pad form so if you guys watched my video last week my ike drawing was actually done on the pad and i had to transfer it by scribbling on the back of my sketch and then basically making it into tracing paper or not tracing paper carbon paper and imprinting the sketch onto the watercolor paper now i didn't really want to go through that hassle so i went and found my old uh, little sheets of hot press paper from Strathmore. Now I haven't used these pieces of like watercolor paper in years so I don't think I <laughs> I didn't think I was actually gonna struggle with painting on this watercolor paper because I thought it was gonna be same, like very similar to my Paul Rubens and the Bao Hong one that I have but yeah I, I, I was wrong. So the dry time was a lot quicker um for some of the areas which kind of creates a little bit of that blotchiness but then also in some areas if i oversaturated with water it didn't dry as fast as i would have like what i was used to so a lot of the skin tone got really dark really quickly and it got a little bit muddy because i was trying to place shadow colors and that kind of bled into like maybe the areas of the cheek and around the eyes which i usually like to make a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more warmer um so they kind of got a more darker color scheme and then my color choices was probably not the best in terms of color matching so Kali's colors came out a lot darker granted that i feel like my marker version and my colored pencil version were not accurate either but this one's like significantly darker which isn't what i was trying to go for but i feel like because i was trying to shift the green so much so many times and layering it up i actually ended up having such a dark color instead of the vibrant green that Kali like Kali's hair actually is so apologies that this probably isn't an accurate uh display of how i actually would watercolor a piece i don't think it's too off so i don't think it's that bad if that makes sense <laughs> hopefully it makes sense but for the line work i am using just a thin i think it's like a i'm trying a food a pen so it's like a really thin haired longer brush kind of pen or I guess it's a brush that I'm using to do the line work and I'm trying my best to make it a little bit darker and matching the colors closely but for the most part um yeah it's not my favorite I think actually I'm gonna look back right now I don't think it's my least favorite the gouache one might be my least favorite we'll see um, but yeah, I did paint in a very light purple background just like the rest of them with the colored pencils and the alcohol markers. And here is it, the kind of final 
iteration of the watercolor one alongside with the other ones. You can see the other ones are a lot more vibrant, even though the marker one and the color pencil probably don't have enough contrast, but this one, it just looks very desaturated and a little bit too dark for my taste. So last but not least, we have the gouache painting. I also forgot to mention for the watercolor painting, I think I took two hours ish i think two hours so it's on the quicker side which i probably should have spent a longer time just trying to fiddle with the medium again so for gouache i made the mistake right off the bat by coloring on cardstock even though like i've painted gouache in my sketchbook before which has thicker paper and my previous sketchbook would had very thin paper which is notebook paper this cardstock really likes to have these little speckles when it gets hit by water. So I was trying my best to cover up as much of that texture as I possibly could, but also I was struggling to keep the paper from warping too much even though it is taped to a board. So there's like a lot of things I was trying to fight with because even though I know gouache and kind of just like painting in general tends to go through like an ugly painting phase. This one I was just not having it even though I knew if I took more time to actually you know paint the areas a little bit more accurately, add the colors that I want, push the contrast and everything, I could probably get it to the place where I wanted to but I think I gave up a little bit too early but for the most part I did follow the same procedure that I usually do. I had the sketch done in I think it's the pilot color Eno in the color pink on cardstock and I do kind of like a light wash of watercolor to prep the paper and kind of to establish the colors that I want to have for the piece and then we switch to the gouache which I use the Hemi jelly gouache for this painting so I'm basically trying to block things in as much as I could now you can see that the face I didn't really touch it much afterwards, which means that the face became very pale and very flat um, compared to everything else. Also, I tried my best to cut this out. I went the tip, like I, like I took a 15 minute nap during my painting session uh, just because I got very drowsy and I forgot to not hit record. Like it was just continuously recording. So uh, apologies if there was like a awkward gap there. I tried my best to cut out as much as I could, but apparently I must have missed a little bit. But uh, the one thing I do like about the gouache is that I get to be a little bit more free with the painting for the most part. I think painting hair has always been my favorite with gouache. So I did try my best to add some other colors into there and just paint it how I would paint it how if I were to just paint in my sketchbook. So mm, not too much to say. I would say that I don't like this one a whole lot and if you want to see me do some other gouache painting highly suggest you watch my mondays videos i tend to do like sketchbook videos and a lot of them from previous attempts and stuff have been gouache um, because i love how vibrant it is and how kind of like cool it looks in the sketchbook because of how opaque and poppy the colors are compared to like my sketches which sometimes are a little bit more scraggly and unfinished kind of more textured kind of bare bones but sometimes gouache kind of makes the spread really pop out so i've been really enjoying using gouache recently but this one it's this one just isn't it and i think in the back of my brain i knew that once i put the line work here i should have pushed the contrast more in their face because their face literally has no no color at all, no warmth or anything. And I love adding warmth and color to the face if I can. Um, especially if they're like super happy, I think they would have like, you know, a little bit rosier cheeks or a little bit of like a flushed face and stuff would look a little bit prettier in my opinion. So for these ones, pretty much I feel like this one looks a little bit too unfinished. I did try my best to redeem myself by adding a little bit more painterly stuff just because if I'm painting, why not make it look a little bit painterly and kind of embrace that texture and stuff instead of trying to make it look super, super clean. But yeah, this is what I ended up doing. You can see that I kind of gave up um, a little bit too early. And the difference between the watercolor one, the colored pencil one, and the marker one and then obviously the graphite which i don't think you can compare to too much but it's still fun to see the bit of the contrast and stuff but yeah so so far we have uh five different versions so let's go ahead and move on to our sixth their sixth version so we can actually see another comparison because 
I think usually people compare it to my digital work, which I always find funny um, whenever I do colors and stuff. I do appreciate that people do like the colors that I use, but I definitely think there's a big difference between a lot of my gouache painting, my uh, colored pencils, and like the markers. But I would like to get to a point where I'm proficient at all of them so that they could potentially look more like my digital drawings because digital and pencil are still my favorite. Digital still gives me a lot more opportunity to play around with color and shapes and like, you know, fun effects and lighting and everything all at my fingertips kind of idea. Well, the other ones kind of require me to strategically plan a little bit more and be a little bit thoughtful about placements and layering and like future um, steps I have to take rather than digital you can kind of fuss around and potentially take a bajillion different routes to get to the same result um, but hopefully this isn't too dizzying I tried my best for each of the footages to become very still if that makes sense like the paper didn't move and a lot of the times for my ipad drawing my ipad doesn't really shift too much so i don't know if my hand being kind of moving at light speed is going to be a little bit dizzy i'll make sure to put the time lapse version right at the end for this one so that you guys can see it without my hand as well as you guys can see how i did the sketch because i did omit that from the very beginning as i thought that i was actually not going to include the digital version but I do think it's important for me to include the digital version, especially because I did do the sketch digitally on the iPad. But I also think like comparing the color choices, I think is just interesting because I do like vibrant colors, but sometimes when I work with like certain mediums, uh, maybe it's like the procedure of it or just like um, the steps that I take and stuff, it makes me choose different colors or different preference for colors and stuff. So. Having the digital version being done last, hopefully it wasn't too too influenced by the other ones. But my main goal was like, I didn't want the traditional ones to be too influenced by my digital version, hence why I wanted to do the digital one last. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me do kind of different versions of the same il like illustration. I know like, maybe this won't be beneficial for some people, but I thought it would just be interesting to see because I know this doesn't show like a full color range, so maybe you don't see the full color payoff per medium or anything like that, or maybe I didn't do like a certain technique, or I didn't push the contrast enough for you guys to get a good enough comparison, but still something fun. And I feel like if you are interested in doing something similar, maybe it's a good benefit to see kind of like your strengths and your weaknesses per style, because I definitely see some of them, especially for certain mediums, and I definitely think like, when I'm treating colors or values for certain mediums, there's definitely some things that I omit and then some things I prioritize. Because I definitely want to say like, for pencil and pencil crayons, I like to push the value as much as I can. Which doesn't mean like for the pencil crayons, it's color accuracy I might be omitting. But I do like adding other colors if I can to make things look a little bit vibrant. But then for markers, I didn't push enough contrast because I'm so scared of the medium. And I think it's also because when the ink dries, sometimes it dries a lot lighter than when the ink first makes contact with the paper. So I'm very scared of working with it. Watercolor and gouache, I think is just like a patience game for me. Sometimes I spend like endless amount of hours just painting for watercolor. Like let's say the Ike piece that I did last week. Or sometimes I feel like I go so fast and I get so frustrated that the piece doesn't look like the way how I wanted it to look. But yeah, here's the digital version of Kale and Amber, and you can see the color choices are probably what I probably prefer, but obviously it won't be a fair comparison for the other mediums because you're gonna be looking at, at a backlit screen, which causes the colors to look more vibrant anyways. But you guys can see the time lapse here of how I did the sketch and probably the full color of it as well on the time lapse version in the next like 30-ish seconds. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm gonna be showing you guys all the comparisons right at the very end and hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing me kind of like play around with the mediums and trying to achieve similar looks to all of them without having kind of like a basis for them. I think it'd be fun next time if I did do a digital drawing, printed it out and seeing if I could achieve the same look with each medium. That could be fun to do, but this is kind of just a fun comparison with just doing 
the medium how I would usually do it without needing the comparison in general. So yeah, the digital version, gouache version on the upper right. Then we have the pencil crayons underneath that, the pencil version right here, and the watercolor in the middle, and then the bottom left hand is the markers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!